you know, other than the normal things, the white socks, athletic socks. Peanut butter. The what? Peanut butter. Oh, peanut butter, yes. Um, we're asking you to buy jars of peanut butter to bring in. We're going to take them over to Grace St. Paul, the St. Joseph's Pantry, uh, to accompany the bread we deliver from uh, Beyond Bread on Thursday evenings. And that bread, by the way, comes out of Beyond Bread every day to go to the food pantry. Um, we're just one of the crews that's picking up bread there to transport over. So um, they contribute a lot of loaves of bread every week. Um, so we're doing jars of peanut butter to take. They use that in their uh, room where they welcome people to a cooling center and provide lunch. They'll make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for them, but also they put it in with their food boxes. So uh, just pick a jar up when you go to the store. Size doesn't matter. It can be a bucket or it can be a, you know, one of those kind of too. Um, they'll use it all up. So uh, keep that in mind as you do your grocery shopping. Um, let's see. September is soon going to be on us already. <clears throat> we will set a date for a rally day. Um, I think we're going to be showing a movie and we're going to be providing breakfast style treats during the showing of that movie for rally day. No water balloons on the patio this year. We're going, whoops, was that a request? No, that was my bullet here. <laughs> Jared, come here, I need your help. Around the mics and back here, my bulletin fell off. The wind got it. So. Was it tough to yep. If if I have if I have to uh, pause in a song, it's probably going to be because the wind took the page and blew it over on me, so I couldn't read. Um, but welcome to worship today. Um, our group is excited to be here with you to offer music and invite you to sing. Uh, Jeremiah is not here today. He's had COVID for the third time, and I talked to him yesterday. He's past giving it to anybody, but he's still working on getting his breath back to be able to sing. So uh, hopefully by the end of this next month and beginning of next week, uh, next September, he will be able to uh, come back and sing with us. Okay, we're on to the order for confession and forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us.
received the gospel affirmation together. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They will not go away. We give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, I guess maybe we couldn't stay that here, huh? <laughs> Time to come back up.
not going to make you crane your neck sideways. I'll sit right in front of you today. There's a lot of symbolism in this gospel reading today. It is not only the miracle of the feeding of more than 5,000 people with a few fish and loaves of bread, but it is also a sign of the bounty of God's grace for all people. It is a sign of the abundance that comes from a meal that when we look at it, in, in reality, we have to wonder how much food really was there for 5,000 plus more people. Because that would have been, I, I know what it takes to feed 300. Because at seminary, I worked in the refectory, the cafeteria, and we hosted meals for large groups of people. And I did one of those meals all by myself. Prepared the food, got the room ready, served the food, and with some help from a few other students, and then did a lot of the cleanup. It was a huge task, and it was a tremendous amount of food. We had 12 of those double food warmers. So as we prepared food, we were shoving dozens of plates in those food warmers so that we could just grab them hot and pass them out to the tables for people for the reception. But here we are, and the disciples seem to be the only ones who've come prepared. Now, the story is a little different in another gospel. In another gospel, the disciples weren't prepared at all. It was a boy who was in the crowd who had loaves and fishes that Jesus used to distribute to the people. So Matthew has a little different thing in mind. For Matthew, the priesthood, the disciples were all crucial and critical so that they might, the people might know that the disciples of Jesus would be prepared to help. But well, we aren't always prepared, are we? The meal of Christ comes to us on a Sunday, whether or not we're feeling like we're ready for it. And we are wondering if it will make any difference to be fed with the bread and wine of Holy Communion. But I want to tell you that the symbolism out of this story is a match for what happens in Holy Communion with you and me. This meal, a simple meal of bread and little wine, I mean very little wine, it's dipped in the bread and there are only a few drops of wine on that bread, is a complete feast from Jesus Christ. It is the living presence of Jesus Christ in, with, and around the bread and wine of Holy Communion. Now we might think it's not much, but when we think about this Gospel reading from Matthew and the fullness of what took place from a few fish and a few loaves for 10,000 people maybe, I wonder if every guy brought his wife and kids with him. It's a possibility. Especially if they were going to be healed, the family would have been with them. It wasn't just that Jesus preached in Matthew in the Sermon on the Mount. He also healed people and as well fed people. So for you and me, this meal that seems pretty meager is filled with all the grace of God in Jesus Christ. It is a meal that fills our hearts and our souls with the living presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There is no other place that you and I can get that. You know, if I go and I want to go out to a nice restaurant with Melody, it can cost us $100 to $150. And there is a, a generous plate of food in front of us, and we're probably going to get dessert, too. And it won't just be a drop of wine. It might be one or two glasses of wine, or maybe an entire bottle of wine brought to the table that we will then carry home the balance for. 
Normally, that's what we expect when we talk about a feast. But that meal is going to go away. That fullness that I have and the feeling of satisfaction in that meal is going to go away. By the time I get to breakfast the next morning, I'm going to be hungry again. And if I decide to cut out breakfast, I'm going to be famished by the time I get to lunch. But what about this meal? This meal that we are gathered to participate in today. When the presence of Christ is brought into the bread and wine of Holy Communion by the power of Christ's Spirit. When I talk about it being the living presence of Jesus Christ, I'm not joking around, I'm not kidding, I'm not giving you the line the church always says. I am telling you, this meal brings to each of us the living presence of Jesus Christ. The presence that brings us forgiveness and life and salvation. The presence that feeds our very hearts and souls until the next time we can be together to receive this meal again. And it, we, we need to remember what Jesus says. When I'm consecrating from the piano bench, and it doesn't matter, by the way, that I consecrate down here at the piano bench, you'll be thankful to not see me fall going up the stairs to get to the altar. However, that consecration, both in the nature of the bread and the wine, Jesus makes a very simple statement. This is my body given for you. And this is the new covenant which is in my blood, which is shed for you. Not like, oh, you can think about it like it might be that. Or you can imagine it's just a way to remember, and by the way, those words are there too, but they are preceded by the word is. Sometimes it is the simplest of words that hold the most meaning coming from Jesus. When Jesus uses the term I am, it isn't just simply a pronoun or a, a noun followed by a little verb, am. It is, I am, which is the name God gives to Moses to let the people of Israel know who has sent them. And like God, Jesus tells us that he is who he is. He is God, fully God, and fully human, suffering for you and me so that our sins might not bear us away from God but instead, through the bread and wine of Holy Communion, bring us into the fullness of God's presence in our lives. I can understand why Martin Luther may have thought it was a good thing to take communion every day. How long does it take us to get to a place later this afternoon where we may not even quite remember what we received in the morning? If your football team, or the women, did they win last night, by the way, the women's yeah. soccer team? Yeah. Okay, good. 2 a.m. in the morning. I hope you didn't stay up to watch it. No. Um, if your team is losing, you're likely to forget the things that Christ called you to through his body and blood and, and the completeness Christ has done with God's law on our behalf, and you may sit in front of your TV and rant and rave at your TV over your team's inability to do what you have wanted them to do, which was to play appropriately and win the game. Have you forgotten where you were on Sunday morning when that happens? In all likelihood, yes. I have teenagers in my house. They know how to enrage me at the drop of a hat. They know how to come to me and say, Hey, Dad, I need $20 to run down to Walgreens. You just got your allowance on Friday, didn't you? Yes, but it's all gone already. And I really need to get a snack, Dad. 
so I need $20 to run down. Well, I want my change. Do you know how often I see change? Almost never. Well, once in a while, one of them must have a guilt trip or something, and they bring me back change. This meal is a wonderful gift of God's grace for us. It is a powerful presence of Jesus Christ, who has promised to be with us always until the end of the age. And he's here. He hasn't just gone away into heaven and is watching what's going on without his presence. He is present in the word which we have read and which I'm speaking about right now. He is present in the prayers. He is present in the music, which are really poems and prayers of celebration to God, just like the Psalms. He is present in the bread and wine of Holy Communion, guaranteeing you and me that He has not gone away, that He will always be with us. So let's remember and celebrate, and let's try to at least get through Sunday. It gets a little harder as we get to Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and then there's pizza night. And you know what's needed on pizza night? Money, Dad! So let's celebrate together today and rejoice in the simple meal of bread and wine which holds all of the presence of Jesus Christ for our lives. In Christ's name. Amen. Seniors, I think, I'm well knowing prayers in the process. that the animals you have created are able to change their life patterns 
and, and to be sustained. That the fish of the ocean, which supply so much food in our world, do not die off, but instead are also able to adjust to the warming temperatures of the water. Be with us in the midst of all of this that's happening, helping us to know the tender way in which you care for our lives. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we pray for Letitia Rohr, Joanna's mom. She's been in and out of the hospital, in the ER, and emergency room. She now has seen her ophthalmologist, and she's, her eye pressure is really sky high uh, with glaucoma. Um, though her doctor has been trying to drain that pressure off of her eye, it keeps returning and gets restored. So she's seen a specialist on Monday uh, up at Northwest, and she will be having surgery Tuesday to, to put in an artificial drain in her eye. We pray for your presence with her, to keep her in your care, to help calm her heart and her mind as she awaits the surgery. And we give you thanks for Joanna and for, for Letitia's cousin who's going to help her with transportation and allow her to stay overnight as she awaits surgery. Uh, be with this whole family, holding them in your care. And we pray for Letitia's healing. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we pray for Jim Blair's cousins, Jim and Janet, for your healing in their lives. We thank you for restoring them here to Tucson safely. We continue our prayers for Candace and Lisa and Alexis for healing and your care and your miracle that has brought Candace to the point she's at today. We pray for it to continue to get her uh, free of cancer. We pray with thanksgiving for Ron and Becky's presence now from a distance in Egan, uh, Minnesota. Be with them and, and be with uh, Maria too as she visits with her daughter up there. I uh, hope this to be an especially happy time for her. Uh, we pray for Leanna and Mark as well for your presence in their lives and your healing and the hope that you can bring to them. We pray for Jim, for his kidney stones and his eye condition. Uh, and we pray that his surgery for cataracts will, tomorrow will be successful and will really restore uh, better vision in the eye that is good right now. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we want to thank you that our nephew Mark is receiving physical therapy and it appears to be helping him. He's now able to sit up with his own strength in the seat. And we're thankful that that's happening and we pray he will continue to find renewed strength. We pray for his dad too, who's suffering with lots of visual issues. Uh, we pray for Annette. Uh, her knee and back are still giving her lots of problems. And we pray that you'll be with her so that as she continues to move around, the work the doctors are doing with her knee will, will gradually improve. And we pray that they're able to give her assistance uh, with the vertebrae in her back. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we pray for Hank. Uh, that you'll be with him to continue to bring your healing to him. And we pray for Annette's aunt Kathy as well. Um, and we pray for Dorothy, who Annette helps to take care of. She's 90 years old. And she has a very generous heart, but a lot of health issues. And we pray that uh, Annette's care will be an extra special presence in her life. Hear us, O oh God. All these things we pray in the name of your Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Please greet one another with the peace of the Lord. Our hearts and minds now to receive the sacrament of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave up his disciples, saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, 
gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer of our Lord's fathers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I would ask that the gospel music uh, singers and musicians would come up and receive communion first.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now you're invited to sing along in this last song. This song sounds more like it belongs at the beginning of a service, but in the third verse there's a section that talks about justice. And that's what we leave here for, is to bring God's justice to the world. God's forgiveness and love is His justice. It is an opportunity for His grace to abound in all the places in which we find ourselves.